How many times do I have to tell you? Pregnancy is not a sickness. Stop lazing around and get back to work. My mother-in-law threw these words at me after dumping all the preparations for a family gathering on me while I was pregnant. To make matters worse, she then aimed a kick at my belly. I quickly curled up to protect my stomach, but her kicks showed no sign of stopping. In desperation, I fumbled around the kitchen sink for something to defend myself with. The first thing I grabbed was a knife. My name is Catherine. I'm 30 years old. I live near my in-laws with my husband Harold, who is two years older than me. I also work full-time, but due to severe morning sickness during my pregnancy, I had to go on maternity leave earlier than expected. Even at home, I was struggling with intense nausea, to the point where I found it difficult to even stand up. Thankfully, Harold has been incredibly supportive, stepping up to handle most of the household chores. Since we both used to work, household duties were shared, but Harold has taken on a greater share to help me out, especially when I'm bedridden. Thanks to him, our home has remained clean and tidy. However, the person who interfered in our lives was my mill. I've never gotten along well with my mill. She often criticizes or makes snide comments about me, so it wasn't surprising that she started nagging me the moment she became aware of our situation. Being pregnant isn't an illness. Why are you shirking household chores? And you're letting your busy husband do all the work. It's unacceptable. Since you're off work and at home, you should be doing everything. My mill had no understanding of the morning sickness I was experiencing. It was hard to believe that these words were coming from another woman who has gone through childbirth. No matter what nagging words my mill threw at me, it wasn't going to make my morning sickness go away. She just labeled me a lazy wife because I couldn't keep up with housework. Once she had made that judgment, she was hell-bent on correcting it. So, she started coming to our house almost daily. She would forcefully wake me up from my sick bed to make me do household chores. It seemed to be her new mission to supervise me. And after I would finish the chores, she would meticulously check everything. It's not like I can pay attention to the details when I'm feeling this sick. Still, my mill would nitpick. There's dust and a strand of hair in the bedroom or the bathroom wall is starting to mold? Or why are the clothes hanging out so wrinkled? A single hair isn't going to kill anyone, and the smell of bleach makes me nauseous. Even the scent of fabric softener, which usually smells nice, makes me feel sick now. She complains and nags without understanding any of this, and then she orders me to redo things, but that's when I hit my limit. Mel, I'll definitely redo it tomorrow. Please let me rest for today. Somehow, I manage to plead with her, and she leaves. Even though I'm on maternity leave, I can't believe I can't get proper rest. I'm starting to question her sanity. I report this to my husband almost every day. He's also angry with my mother-in-law, and he calls her each time. Mom, Catherine is suffering so much from morning sickness that she needs to go on maternity leave. Why on earth would you pressure her to do chores? Didn't you experience morning sickness when you had me? When my husband confronts her angrily, she dismisses us. Oh, when I was pregnant with you, Jack, I never had morning sickness. Catherine is just being dramatic. Taking time off work is just weak. If she's just lazing around at home, doing chores for you is the least she could do. After all, pregnancy isn't a sickness, but my husband persists. Sure, pregnancy may not be a sickness, but the fact is she feels awful. Forcing her to work is just not right. Don't you have any compassion? I'm thinking of Jack who's tired from work. A wife who makes her husband do chores after work is just a terrible wife. I'm doing this to make sure Catherine doesn't turn out to be a bad wife. I should be thanked for this. Nothing gets through to her. I started to feel guilty about bringing it up to my husband, as he would be even more exhausted after calling his mom post-work. Time went by and I was finally getting through the worst of my morning sickness. I thought her daily visits would finally stop once I was past this period. But 
holding on to her belief that pregnancy isn't a sickness. My mother-in-law continued to torment me even more. Finally, I passed the worst of my morning sickness and entered a stable period. Then she started summoning me to her place during my days off. At first, I didn't know why. But when she said, Jessica, it's urgent. Come here quickly. I rushed over. It turned out she had small errands she wanted me to run. She can't drive. And her mode of transportation for visiting us or going shopping is her bicycle. But she doesn't like carrying heavy things on it. While I'm pregnant, my mill keeps asking me to shop for heavy items like rice and bulk laundry detergent. She's not even offering to drive with me. She just dumps the entire chore on me, asking someone in my condition to do this. Despite my thoughts, I find myself unable to say no and end up doing as my mill wishes. Well, the annual memorial service for my late grandmother-in-law is just around the corner. Last year, I was worked to the bone during this event, but I thought that being pregnant this year would mean I'd be less involved. Boy, was I wrong. The ceremony will be held at the in-laws house. All the preparations have fallen onto me. My mill even chuckled and said, you're in the stable period of your pregnancy, right? You can work all you want. Pregnancy isn't an illness, haha. <laughs> I quickly realized she has no intention of helping. So like last year, I'm in charge of preparing for the memorial service. Somehow, I managed to get through the day of the event. Many relatives gathered at my in-laws house. I was busy in the kitchen preparing for the post-ceremony meal. It was tough to keep going in the heat, so I took a brief break. Just then, my mill walks into the kitchen. Seeing me resting, she says, Catherine, how many times do I have to tell you? Pregnancy is not an illness. Why can't you work like everyone else? Stop slacking off and work hard like a good daughter-in-law. Why can't I work like everyone else? Maybe because I'm carrying another life in my belly. I almost blurted this out. I suppose my facial expression was full of defiance towards my mill, though I didn't say anything. She must have sensed my resistance. Suddenly, she swung her foot towards my belly, trying to kick me. I instinctively curled up to shield my belly, but her attacks didn't stop. I've got to do something. The baby could be. I was frantic. I reached towards the kitchen sink, looking for something to defend myself with. My hand touched a handle. I grabbed it and thrust it in front of my advancing mill. It happened to be a kitchen knife. She seemed to realize it was a knife but couldn't stop her kicking motion in time, swinging her foot towards the knife. Slash. Thud. With a horrifying sound, she fell over. The sole of her foot was soaked in blood. What? What do I do? I was in a state of panic. Just then, Aunt Theresa, my father-in-law's sister, entered the kitchen. She immediately took out her smartphone and called for an ambulance. Then she yelled for my husband, Harold, bring the car around right now. Catherine was just kicked in the belly by Tammy. Take her to the op slash GYN for an examination. Aunt Theresa gave those instructions to Harold. It seemed she had been watching our whole altercation. While Harold was getting the car ready, Aunt Theresa turned to me and said, I wish I had noticed earlier, I'm sorry. Your baby will be fine. Stay strong. I'll handle Tammy, so don't worry about her. Soon, Harold came back after prepping the car and carried me to it. Aunt Theresa told him, I'll fill you in on the details later. Right now, just worry about Jane and the baby. So, we headed for the op slash GYN. Just as we pulled out, the ambulance arrived. I wondered if Tammy would be okay. We went to the op slash GYN and had checks done to see if there were any issues with our baby. Turns out, since I curled up to shield my belly, the baby hadn't received any direct harm and was fine. We both let out a sigh of relief. As we left the op slash GYN, Harold received a message about which hospital Tammy was taken to. I didn't want to see Tammy. But Harold felt the need to hear the full story, so we headed to the hospital. Upon arrival, 
we found Aunt Theresa and my father-in-law standing outside their treatment room. It seemed Tammy had received stitches in the sole of her foot and would soon be out. Harold was eager to know the truth. Aunt Theresa, what exactly happened in the kitchen? Aunt Theresa looked at me and nodded. I took it as a nod saying she wouldn't put me in a bad light. Then she began to tell the story. When I was heading to the kitchen, I heard Tammy bad-mouthing Catherine in such an unreasonable way. Unreasonable? How? My husband asked. Yo, she was saying that pregnancy isn't an illness and questioning why Catherine can't work like everyone else. On top of that, she even told her to stop slacking off and get to work. Crazy, right? Tammy then started kicking Catherine's pregnant belly. By the time I got to the kitchen, it was already that bad. Catherine was trying to guard her belly with something from the sink just when I was about to step in. It just happened to be a knife. Isn't that right, Catherine? Then it was my turn to speak. Yes, that's right. I was curling up to protect myself and grab whatever was in the sink without seeing what it was. And it happened to be a knife. When I presented it quickly in front of Tammy, it ended up cutting her foot. Aunt Theresa chimed in again. I saw the whole thing, and it looked accidental to me. Catherine didn't seem to grab the knife on purpose. This I'll testify to. So, are you two going to believe Tammy over us? My father-in-law and my husband were the ones Aunt Theresa was addressing. My father-in-law said, Well, it's hard to believe. But if you're saying so, Theresa, I'll trust you guys. I've known for a while that Tammy doesn't think highly of Catherine. And my husband said, I totally believe Catherine. I can't imagine her deliberately grabbing a knife. And what my mill did is totally unacceptable. Verbal abuse is one thing. But kicking a pregnant woman, she endangered two lives. That's awful. Just then, my mill walked out of the treatment room with crutches. Her right leg was injured and wrapped in bandages. When she spotted me, she slowly approached and began yelling, You violent daughter-in-law, how dare you show up here? Do you know how much pain I'm in? I can't believe I had to get stitches in my foot. I could report you to the police. She started yelling at me with great intensity. Everyone in the room looked at her coldly. Realizing this, she turned to my husband and said, Harold, you should divorce this violent woman right away. Who knows what she'll do next? I'm saying this for your sake. Get ready to separate. Now, her husband listens with a cold gaze. To be honest, after hearing Aunt Theresa's testimony, it's pretty clear who the violent one is. Knowing this, everyone is giving the mother-in-law icy looks. Finally, she seems to notice the stairs. What? Why is everyone looking at me like that? I'm the one who's badly hurt here. Clearly, it's this daughter-in-law who's in the wrong. Then the father-in-law starts talking. We've heard everything from your sister, Tammy. You were the one who started mistreating Catherine, weren't you? Why did you kick a pregnant Catherine in the stomach? That's real violence. He raised his voice towards the end. The husband also chimes in. Mom, why did you say such horrible things to Catherine and act so violently? You put Catherine and the baby at risk, as her husband and a father-to-be. I can't forgive you. I never want to see your face again. And there it is, a declaration of estrangement. The mother-in-law is left speechless. Mouth agape. The father-in-law adds to it. Oh, it seems Harold got ahead of me. I can't continue with you either. If you can't take care of our daughter-in-law and grandchild, it's over. What do you mean, Dad? The mother-in-law timidly asks. Don't you get it? I'm divorcing you. Pack your bags and go. The father-in-law states bluntly. Then Aunt Theris adds, well said. As for the mother-in-law, she drops her crutch falls to her knees, and hangs her head in defeat. What happened next is quite a story. The divorce between the in-laws was messy. The mill kicked up quite a fuss, saying she didn't want to separate. However, the father-in-law hired a lawyer. It wasn't until mediation was almost complete that the mill finally accepted the divorce. Meanwhile, 
Harold was making arrangements to sever all parental ties with his mother, so the mill ended up losing her family. Interestingly, when she was initially taken to the uh, all the relatives were concerned about her, but Aunt Theresa filled them in on the real story so the mill lost the sympathy of everyone. Honestly, she had it coming. There's no room for pity here. Once healed, the mill was kicked out. She rented an apartment using the money from the property settlement. Having been a housewife for years, she now had to work, thinking that a part-time job would be a piece of cake. She soon found out that her poor performance and attitude got her shunned. She's been quitting and switching jobs ever since. Her prospects aren't looking good, but honestly, it's not our concern anymore. As for us, well, we welcomed a beautiful baby girl into the world without any complications from the earlier assault. Both Harold and the father-in-law were overjoyed and teary-eyed. Life is about to get challenging, but we're committed to building a happy family while protecting our daughter.